Okay, guys, we're going to talk about the founding of America, this great experiment of a new nation, a new government, and a new way of doing things. I've talked about the virtuous republic, and I want you to think about what those two words mean. Okay, we have to look at this classical view of a model republic with the people having a say, and we have to look at the ideal citizen, this citizen that is going to be selfless, this citizen that is going to freely give to a government and, and give of self to the government and be a, an active participant. This idea of a city on a hill, an example for all others to follow and to overlook and keep watch on, I, I guess, the world, maybe. And then we cannot forget about Enlightenment thinking and its monumental influence on this virtuous republic, this new government that America was embarking on. Now, to list out some other characteristics of the virtuous republic, we have government is going to get its authority from the citizens, this idea of popular sovereignty. The government has authority because the citizens give it the authority. A selfless, educated citizenry, a citizenry that is going to participate in government and give freely of themselves to its well-being and to its success and to uh, secure an education in order to do that. You have to remember this time period, those two things were, were new ideas, really, the, the significance of education and uh, the significance of the self. Now, elections should be frequent. That's going to be another aspect of this virtuous republic, and it goes back to number one, government getting its authority from the citizens. Citizens grant that authority to, through the election process. The citizens choose these individuals they want to represent them, choose the individuals that they want to speak for them. That's how the citizens speak and give authority and give permission, if you will. Government should guarantee individual rights and freedoms. Remember social contract. Social contract with the individuals giving up some rights or some freedoms in order for the government to protect them and government to look out for natural rights of life, liberty, and property or pursuit of happiness as it's stated in our government. Now government's power should be limited, checks and balances. Back to that fear thing, that fear of you know, the fear of monarchy, that fear of tyranny, if you will. Um, government's power has to be limited and it operates under a rule of law. And it's going to do so with checks and balances, setting up powers of the government so that each branch has certain powers and each branch can keep the others from getting too powerful. And part of that limiting government is going to be a need for a constitution. Go back to civics. Remember your definition of constitution. It is a written document that sets up the powers and limitations of the government. Not just the powers, not just the limitations, but both. And it puts it in writing. Now, e pluribus unum, out of many one, out of many individuals, out of many cultures, out of many who are represented, we are going to become one nation. In this case, out of many colonies that become states, out of many states, we become one nation. Understand, as under the Articles, this government was just many, and there was no unification. But with a new constitution and a new government, we become the United States of America, not just a collection of states in America. Now, an important role for women raise good virtuous citizens. Um, women are still not getting everything they deserve or everything they desire in this particular government. There's an idea of the Republican womanhood. A woman's place is to raise good citizens and to teach their children how to be good citizens and be selfless of, of everything and to be participants and to help raise them in an educated manner and help um, secure that work ethic that leads to success. Now, 1776, big year for America. I know we're backing up just a little here, but I think it's important. A resolution is going to make it through Congress declaring independence, leaving the questions of where to go and what kind of government to set up. This new government, a shock for everyone. We were a, a target for the world to watch 
What was going to happen? Was it going to work? The expectation? It was going to fail. Now, Congress is going to seek alliances, and they look to France. France doesn't want to be on the side that loses, so they, there's this waiting game to see which way the wind blows, what's going to happen. Can these little colonies defeat the most powerful military, the most powerful navy in the world? Um, I've said it before, David and Goliath battle. Um, the American idea of government is radical, and those watching are viewing it as a form that was not possible to work. It really wasn't supposed to work. So France was in great fear of jumping on board, and it was only after um, the colonies had showed some success and showed their determination and really had gotten to a point that Britain was so worn down that France jumped in and um, changed the tide of the war for the colonies and secured a victory. Now, there are two sides to this government debate. Okay, the Federalists are pushing for a strong federal government, a strong national government. The Nationalists are fearing chaos, fearing a breakdown of social order. They're too afraid of government becoming too strong. This, again, fear of tyranny. Um, the Articles are going to be the compromise because the Articles the articles are just an idea. The Articles are something that is not giving government significant power, and, but it's, it's setting up this alliance. Um, but unfortunately, the Articles are way too weak. Um, so establishing a new government, the Articles are going to be what's adopted. This Article of Confederation, establishing a relationship of convenience between the states. That's really all a confederation is. We agree to uh, have this governing body that has minimal power and really, in our case, has no force of law. But if we get in trouble, we'll join together in order to defeat a common enemy. Now, with this, the Articles of Confederation lead to our national government. It's going to focus on war and defense, the power to declare war, make peace, sign treaties, have some financial power with borrowing money, setting up um, standards for money, even establishing a postal service for um, communication of the day. And with America would be able to negotiate and to defend as this America would become. So very limited power, a unicameral government with um, no real force of law. So what happens, the strong points, we have this first constitution, it's set in motion a national government. We have a plan. Power to the states, um, that's a somewhat of a debatable concept because each state also had its own government and um, participation in the Articles of Confederation was just so difficult to get anything done. Um, an idea that government was closer to the people because of that representation. Weak points, way too many and a lot more that falls on this slot, si slide. Sorry, I don't know why I'm stuttering. Uh, the weak points, it could not tax. No regulation of interstate trade. Unanimous consent is required in order to make a change. Unanimous consent. It's extremely difficult to get in any situation. So it makes change very difficult. That was their intent, really, because they did want a government closer to the people. They did want more power to the states, and they did fear a strong national government. Now, Adam Smith, a guy known for wealth of nations, he's going to argue that social order and progress are the natural result of individualism and self-interest. Okay, progress is the result of an individual. Progress is the result of self-interest. Now, John Dickinson, somewhat of an opponent here. He is known for his stance prior to the war of um, believing that a republic required virtuous people. Think about that for a second. What is virtuous? What does virtue mean? So how is this coming in conflict, conflict with Adam Smith? Um, John Dickinson, the new government could only succeed if people place the good of the nation above their personal interest. Adam Smith, if a government allowed independent citizens to pursue their own economic and political interest, the whole nation would benefit. In other words, John Dickinson is saying selflessness is the key. Everyone is going to have to be selfless. Everyone is going to have to give of themselves to the government and put themselves below the 
the significance of the government and, and make sure that everything they do, their personal interest isn't the key element of what they're going to do. Whereas Adam Smith is saying, look, if you're pursuing personal interest, then it's going to lead to a better nation, a better government, because everyone who's in it for themselves ends up being in it for the nation as a whole. So, you know, you can put those two ideas together with independent citizens. If you're looking out for yourself and trying to do what is best for yourself and, and extend your own economic interest, then that's going to build the good of the government. Whereas Dickinson's saying, mm, no, that personal self-interest not going to work. So, um, something's going to have to be done about the articles. With Shays' Rebellion, it's shown that the articles are going to be way too weak. So there's pressure from Hamilton and Madison to, um, to create a new government, to create something with a little more oomph to it. Okay, and part of the other issue is the debt of the nation. All of the new states didn't just freely give to the United States or to the Confederation. Um, there was just way too much debt during the war. For sovereignty to work, it was necessary to have the power to fight and the power to pay for it. The Articles established a government and got the ball rolling on independence, but this executive committee style had no power to force the states to contribute funds. They were hoping that they would give out of the goodness of their own hearts. Now granted, they may, may have wanted to give, but if you don't have much to give or you don't have anything to give, how are you going to do so? Or you look at your budget and you try to figure out where, where's that money going to come from? Uh, we'll get it next time. Well, next time never comes, okay? It would require unanimous action to pass something that would force the states to contribute funds. Okay, so the Maryland is going to be a holdout in, in um, the articles and establishing a government and getting the ball rolling here. Maryland's a little slow on the uptake. The French, 1781, they decide to join the war effort. It looks like America is going to win this thing. Um, this got the attention of England, drew their attention to other areas. They're realizing that their chances of winning are pretty slim. England's wanting to keep colonial possessions. Uh, Spain wanted Gibraltar back. Um, there's a whole problem that just won't go away. And uh, there's also the question of the lands in the, in the West. Now, the United States, they just want to be recognized as independent. If they can get that recognition, then maybe they can get the ball rolling on a new government. Now, the basic issue of this new government, money, finance. There's a question of what to do with the army after the war. Do we maintain this army? Do we discharge this army? Go back to the fear and the fear of tyranny and the fear of takeover. So many times takeover results from some type of powerful military leader. And let's face it, if you discharge the military, then um, you limit your chances of some government takeover by a military general. If you maintain it, you may have that security, but you're taking the risk of someone getting in and getting too powerful. So the U.S. is going to be faced with how to finance the war. The solution of choice was to create debt. Okay, two forms of domestic and one uh, of foreign. Remember, domestic is within the borders, foreign is outside. The American Congress uh, creates wealth the easy way. Print it. Over $200 million, resulting in massive inflation, and there is no specie to back it up. Remember specie, hard money? The obvious means of fixing this problem of debt, borrow money. Bonds, certificates, consider it an IOU as the Army passes through. They took what they needed and left a certificate in return. Not really a golden ticket for those who lost all their goods, but they at least had this IOU that they could hand into the government and say, Come on, you owe me money. Congress was also able to borrow money from France, Spain, and Holland. Come on, think about civics right now and financial decisions, economic finance, and uh, positive budgeting. Debt, bad thing. Borrowing money creates more debt. Printing money creates massive inflation and decreases the value. We are not off to a good start here in America.